I'm out here in remote Utah, which has some of the best stargazing in all of the US, and I've brought the iPhone 16 Pro to see just how good it is for night sky photography. As a professional astrophotographer, I've used pretty much every type of astro gear you can think of, which is why I wanted to see how the iPhone 16 holds up when compared to pro level cameras when you're taking photos of the stars. But before we do that, let's see how you actually take photos of the Milky Way using your iPhone. Did you know there's a secret setting that lets you take insane photos of the Milky Way? Well, let me show you how that's done. To access this feature, you need to have your phone on a stable surface. I've got mine on a tripod. And if you're holding your phone, you're not gonna get access to this feature. Now, watch what happens when I put the camera into night mode. You'll see the maximum exposure time increases from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. And this is the secret that allows you to get photos of the Milky Way and the night sky. For the best results, you have to go far away from city lights to a dark sky location. Now, before I reveal the shots taken with the iPhone, we need something to compare them with because I need you to truly appreciate how crazy these results are. So we'll be comparing them to two professional level cameras, the Fujifilm X-T4 and the Sony A7S III. When the X-T4 came out, it was the flagship camera for the brand, and I'll be using it with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. The Sony a7S III is an all-star when it comes to astrophotography because of its low light capability, and I'll be using it to photograph the Milky Way with a 24mm f1.4 lens. Here is a 30 second image from the Sony a7S III, and the results are great, which is to be expected. Now astrophotographers know that 30 seconds is not ideal because we get star trails. Shorter is actually better, but I wanted to do a fair comparison because the iPhone shoots for 30 seconds. Now let's look at a picture from the Fuji, a $2,000 setup. And the 30 second images turned out really good. In fact, a lot of people don't know that Fuji cameras are really good for astrophotography. One of the main differences between these two cameras is the sensor size. And this is important when it comes to the iPhone, so we'll touch on that later. Okay, now that we've seen the results from the pro cameras, check out what a Milky Way photo looks like taken with an iPhone 16. Okay, I'm just kidding. That's not the photo. I'll show you the actual results here. And after I do, I want to tell you about some of the weird and surprising things that I uncovered while taking a closer look at the results. Okay, I hope you're sitting down because the iPhone 16 Pro is going to blow you away with how good it is at photographing the Milky Way. Here is the actual Milky Way photo I took, and believe me when I say this photo is amazing. I didn't do any special processing or editing to this image. This was straight out of the iPhone. And if you want some context about how good this result is, I showed this to other astrophotographers, including Sony ambassadors, and they were all blown away by these results. Look at it side by side with the photos from the pro cameras. Even I would have a hard time telling which one was taken with the iPhone and which one was with the pro cameras. Now the iPhone's processor is automatically editing these photos. You can't avoid that even if you shoot in their pro raw format. And this is where the pro cameras have an advantage because they shoot in a true raw format, which means I can push the details and refine the images I take further than I could with the iPhone photos. But this video is not about photo editing. All I did with the pro images was change the color balance and brightness to match the iPhone picture. I did try to photograph the Milky Way with the zoom lens and the ultra wide lens on the phone, and I'll get to that later. First, I'm going to show you some strange things I found when I took a closer look at the pictures. This first one is something the iPhone does that, in my opinion, makes the photos worse. And I'm going to show you how I overcame that and made the photos even better than before. When we take a closer look at the results, there's something strange going on in the background sky. Here's what it looks like in the pro cameras. You can see the grainy neutral background which is to be expected. But look at the background sky from the iPhone. You see these strange looking artifacts, shapes, and textures? I think what's happening is the phone's automated processing is doing a noise reduction on the background sky, which is introducing all of these artifacts that we're seeing. Now there's nothing wrong with noise reduction. Professional photographers do noise reduction as well. We do it manually though, instead of an automated process. So when we take our raw photos onto the computer, we have more control over how much noise reduction is being applied. But I'm gonna fill you in on a little secret that gets rid of those artifacts to produce a nice clean image. So to do this, I took 11 consecutive photos of the Milky Way with the iPhone, all 30 second shots, and I used a program to stack all of those images together. The resulting stacked image has removed all of that noise and strange textures that we were seeing in the single 30 second image from the iPhone. And now we have a much nicer, cleaner resulting photo. 
So the noise reduction is unfortunate, but fixable. However, this next thing I discovered about how the iPhone is taking photos really blew my mind. If we zoom in on the pro camera photos, we can see star trails, which is to be expected because the stars are constantly moving in the night sky and we're doing 30 second exposures. But when I took a closer look at the photos from the iPhone, I didn't see those star trails. I didn't see the motion of the stars. And as I was looking through the other phone pictures, I noticed this one image that had a plane streaking through it and it looked kind of weird to me. Take a look at this plane. You can see three distinct sections where the position changes. As I started to look closer at other photos, I noticed it more and more. Now, if this was a true 30 second image, that plane would be a straight line. This was the clue that tells me the phone isn't taking a 30 second image, but instead taking three 10 second images aligning the stars together and then stacking all three images into a single photo. This is really exciting because as we saw before, I had to use a separate program to align and stack my images together to get that better Milky Way result, where it seems like the iPhone has the capability to do it internally. And what I'd love to see in the future is for the iPhone to change its maximum exposure time from 30 seconds to let's say a minute or two minutes. So then it can take more 10 second exposures and stack them together. Now I did test the other two lenses that come with the iPhone 16. And let me tell you, the 5X lens gave me a really unexpected surprise result, which I'll get to in a moment. But I had this burning question that I needed answered. I just couldn't wrap my head around how the iPhone was doing such a good job at photographing the Milky Way, especially given how small the sensor size is when compared to these professional level cameras. Was it something in the automated processing that I didn't understand? Was there something about the sensor I needed to know? Was it introducing fake data? Well, to investigate, I started by looking up the camera sensor size on the iPhone. After a few quick Google searches, I could not for the life of me find the dimensions of the camera sensor in the phone. All I could find was the length of the sensor diagonal. So I guessed the sensor ratio to be three by four and I did a little bit of A squared plus B squared equals C squared and found that the sensor is about 12 by 16 millimeters. Those numbers don't really mean much to me, so I needed some context to see just how small that sensor size was. To my surprise, the iPhone 16 sensor was almost comparable to the Fuji APS-C sensor. I mean, look, they're very similar in size and it makes so much sense now why the iPhone 16 is doing such a great job. When the A7S III and the X-T4 were released in 2020, the iPhone sensor size was half of what it is now. And I think that's what was going on. I had in my head that the sensor size was still the same as my iPhone 11 Pro camera. Okay, all of the photos that I've been taking with the iPhone have been with the One X lens, but the phone has two other lenses. So how do those two perform when it comes to astrophotography? Well, I photographed the Milky Way with both lenses, and I have to admit, the results are really disappointing. These lenses just aren't made for this type of photography. However, the 5X zoom lens gave me one of the most surprising and unexpected results. Take a look at this. This is a photo of the Andromeda Galaxy taken using the 5X lens. The fact that you can photograph an object two and a half million light years away with your phone is insane. And after photographing Andromeda, I saw a star cluster rising in the east over the rocks. So I pointed my phone in that direction and snapped a photo using both the 1X and 5X lenses. What I captured was the Pleiades, a famous group of stars that ancient civilizations used as a marker for the changing seasons. Also, there's that Red Hot Chili Peppers song that mentions it. So the 5X lens can get you close up photos of deep space objects, which is super cool. But if you're gonna photograph the Milky Way, my recommendation is to just stick with the 1X lens for the best results. If I had to pick, I would say that the pro cameras are still better and that really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. I can swap out the lenses so I can see deep space. They let me shoot in raw format so I can push the details further instead of letting the iPhone automatically process my images. But at the end of the day, the simplicity of the iPhone is what makes it amazing. I initially wanted to make this video to see how the iPhone 16 compared to my cameras, especially since I was upgrading from the iPhone 11. And I honestly didn't think the pictures were gonna turn out as good as they did. But you know what the coolest thing is? Because it's so easy for people to take photos of the Milky Way now, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on fancy gear. And that's a huge win for me because that means you're gonna be able to go out, capture the beauty of the Milky Way and the night sky and share it with other people. And that is the best thing I could ask for. If you wanna learn how to do astrophotography or if you've ever wanted to go on a stargazing adventure, go to my website at stargazertours.com where I host workshops. They call this Death Valley. It's too beautiful to be deadly. Or if you think space is fake or the earth is flat, maybe you should join anyway. You might have your mind blown, who knows? 
Anyways, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.